Good morning, class. Um, today I'm going to give you an introductory lecture on Virginia Woolf and her novel Mrs. Dalloway. Woolf is one of the most famous modernist writers, and along with James Joyce, she was uh, renowned for popularizing the stream of consciousness narrative technique within her novels. Okay. Now, what is the stream of consciousness? Uh, it is a term which was coined by Alexander Bain in 1855, and it is a narrative technique. It is a form of interior monologue through which the writer expresses the thought processes inside his or her mind. Okay. Um, the definition of stream of consciousness is it is the written equivalent. It is a dramatic monologue, which is a written equivalent of the writer's own thought processes as in how a set of multitudinous thoughts appear within the writer's mind. It is expressed in writing. Okay. Um, and Wolf's novels, just like uh, James Joyce's novels, are a sort of literary experimentation uh, of the stream of consciousness narrative style. Okay. Wolf's dates are 1881, 1882 to 1941. And Wolf was part of the famous elite Bloomsbury group of uh, London. And other writers, such as uh, her own husband, Leonard Wolf, E.M. Forrester, they were all part of the Bloomsbury group. Wolf was also openly bisexual <coughs> and she had uh, an affair. Uh, she had a lover, a woman named Vita Sackville West. Uh, and uh, Mrs. Dalloway, which is written in 1925, which is one of Wolf's later novels, it's a semi autobiographical novel. So, a lot of Wolf's own life is mirrored in the life of the protagonist, Clarissa Dalloway, in the novel. Okay. So, the novel, it bases itself, it is, um, it shows one day in the life of Clarissa Dalloway. Okay, there are also other characters who will appear in the novel. And the novel is sort of, largely it occurs in the form of the stream of consciousness or an interior monologue. So, we are offered an insight into the minds of the characters. You will have these long interior monologues where you are offered, the reader is offered a glimpse into the minds of the characters and the way in which the thoughts are unfolding inside the minds of the characters. This is typical stream of consciousness style of writing. Okay. Um, as I mentioned to you, Wolf was bisexual. She was married to Leonard Wolf. She had a lover called Vita Sackville West. And Wolf also used to suffer from <coughs> depression and anxiety. So, um, she was suicidal and ultimately <coughs> she ended her life by committing suicide by drowning herself in the Sussex River. Okay, she was an extremely talented uh, writer, of course, and she was also prone, <coughs> just like Emily Dickinson, who we have covered, she was also extremely uh, prone to panic attacks and to depression. So, you see that uh, a preoccupation with death, with suicide, that sort of determines a large part of her novels, especially a novel like uh, Mrs. Dalloway, which is a reflection of Wolf's own life. Okay, now, coming to the novel itself, <coughs> it is written in 1925, it was published in 1925. Um, it shows the life of the protagonist, Clarissa Dalloway. She's a high society woman and the novel is also based in post-war, post-World War England. Okay, so there are references to the World War and there are indirect references to the World War and how it has crippled both the economy as well as the psyche of the people of London. Okay, um, the main characters of course are Clarissa Dalloway um, and the story, the novel unfolds in the course of one day. This is very important. <coughs> it is based in real time. That is, as you're reading the novel, it takes place from morning to night. So it bases itself, uh, it, it shows one day in the life of Clarissa Dalloway. Okay. And the main character, of course, are Clarissa. She has a husband, Richard Dalloway. And Richard Dalloway, Clarissa Dalloway, as I told you, she's a reflection. She's a portrayal of Wolf herself. Um, her husband, Richard Dalloway, is a portrayal of Leonard Wolf, And she's she married Richard. There are also flashbacks through the stream of consciousness technique. Wolf is offering us flashbacks into Clarissa's early life. Okay. And Clarissa chose Richard Dalloway over a lover called Peter Walsh. Peter Walsh will also appear as a character in the novel. Um, Richard Dalloway, she chose for his money. And she is... Uh, she she's married to Richard Dalloway and Richard is a member of the parliament. Okay, but you see that she is not happy in this marriage. Okay, Clarissa largely stays to herself. She has a grown up daughter and she finds no purpose in life. Okay, she organizes parties. 
she's good at organizing parties so she's trying to host a party and that's the major sort of theme of uh, the novel that she's throwing a party and uh, she's inviting people for a for a party for her husband okay and uh, the character peter uh, there are flashbacks and he'll also appear as a character peter was one of the persons who loved clarissa in his youth okay and he had proposed to clarissa but clarissa had rejected peter walsh's proposal because at that time uh, peter was broke okay peter didn't have money and she had chosen the elite life she had chosen the high society life by marrying richard instead so peter had gone to india and now he's having an affair with a young girl in india and he has come back to england to secure his divorce papers and he comes to meet clarissa so there are flashbacks and there are references to um uh, peter's early life and peter and clarissa's early life okay so both of them are reminiscing or remembering their past life okay there's also a reference to <coughs> clarissa's childhood friend sally seaton uh, who is once again i told you wolf was bisexual so wolf had a lover called vita sackville west and you see that clarissa also was deeply attracted to this girl called Sally Seaton and there's a reference in the novel where the two of them share a kiss okay and she describes the kiss as the most pure it is not a very sexual or erotic moment but it is a very pure uh, moment uh, for uh, for Clarissa okay and she will of course tell you that she did not marry Peter because Peter was broke and she could not marry Sally because given the society of early 20th century England it was impossible to marry Sally and so she had to choose Richard okay there's another important character called Septimus Warren Smith okay he is a he had gone uh, as a soldier to participate in the world war okay in the war he had lost his best friends there are references there are homosexual references here he had lost his best friend in the war and he has come back and he suffers from what is known as shell shock what is that although the war is over you see that inside his psyche he's trapped in the war so he's constantly thinking that there are shells there are bombs around him and that everything is about to come to an end and you we are also introduced to his wife both thing she tries to save septimus she tries to you know bring him back to normalcy to a state of normalcy but you see that septimus refuses to um come back to a state of normalcy okay um he thinks that the life around him is a sort of meaningless and useless and he's traumatized by the world war so there are also indirect references to the first world war here and wolf as a person was also deeply disturbed by the by the uh, first world war and how it had crippled both the economy of england and also the mental psyche of the people of england okay so uh, also another thing you remember that although septimus and clarissa do not ever meet uh, in the novel the novel is based in the uh, over one day in the life of clarissa they do not actually encounter each other in the novel uh, septimus is the alter ego of clarissa at the end of the novel and i'll be uh, i'll be getting into the story in my next lecture at the end of the novel septimus will be committing suicide and you will see that throughout the novel clarissa has had suicidal thoughts so in many ways septimus is the alter ego of clarissa and by choosing death in many ways uh, wolf kills off septimus so that clarissa can carry on with her own life okay so septimus chooses death clarissa chooses death but at the end of the day she comes back from the point of death and chooses to come back to life okay so septimus is dead in a way also septimus by dying um he he's a alter ego of clarissa as i told you he chooses death and so that clarissa the rest of the world may continue living and this is something that <coughs> wolf had herself said when wolf was asked why are you going to kill one of the characters in the novel wolf had answered so that the others around me can value life more okay so <coughs> i told you wolf was herself deeply given to suicidal thoughts and septimus dies so that clarissa as well as the others in the novel can continue living their lives okay <coughs> septimus has a wife um his wife's name is lucrezia or rezia smith she comes from a poor humble background and poor thing she tries to save septimus but it is in vain okay she cannot save septimus from the point of disaster okay there's a, there's of course peter walsh 
Um, he's a childhood lover or someone who loved Clarissa in his youth, but Clarissa rejected him by choosing Richard instead. So he has come back to Clarissa's life. Okay, <clears throat> so these are the main characters of the novel. Once again, the novel takes place over the course of one day in the life of Clarissa Dalloway. It is largely in the form of stream of consciousness or interior monologue, where you are constantly offered a sort of perspective into the psyche of each of these characters. Okay, so there are long interior monologues where you, uh, where the reader sort of tries to uh, get inside the mind of each of these characters and you see how thoughts are unfolding inside the minds of each of these characters. So there are a lot of flashbacks, flash forwards, there are a lot of um, uh, the way in which thoughts appear within the human side, that is the way in which these are expressed. So the characters are offered a sort of perspective into the psyche of, uh, sorry, the readers are offered a perspective into the psyche of each of these characters. Okay, uh, more on the novel, more on the story and how it unfolds in my uh, next lecture. Okay, have a good day all of you.